Welcome to the Halloumi course part one and this first part is basically about making cheese. This particular cheese um, starts with sterilizing everything going. All the things that you use including yourself have to be spotlessly clean and the utensils sterilized. And we're then also going to add some rennet to cool boiled water. The, if it's hot water the rennet will die and it won't work properly. And that's about six drops for about four and a half litres of milk that we're going to add very shortly and that's enough. Now you can use any animal milk you like to do this. Uh, we're not using a starter and this is full fat animal milk. It doesn't work very well if it's UHT milk um, but this is perfectly fine. Four and a half litres is then going to be heated to 33 degrees Celsius and having done that we're going to add the rennet and the rennet is going to do its job and it needs to stay at 33 degrees Celsius for around about 45 minutes possibly longer as we will find out later in this course the cheese doesn't always do what it's supposed to do which is a bit of fun so we give it all a good stir and then once we're getting near to temperature we're going to start thinking about adding our rennet to the mixture. Now I use a thermal cooker. It's a Mr. D's thermal cooker because it, it's a bit like a thermos flask only it's big. It's a pan sized thermos flask. It doesn't take any energy but it uh, keeps things warm. It keeps the temperatures right and so that helps. The other thing that it does is that it actually makes sure that your cheese is protected but you don't need to use one of those if you haven't got one or can't afford one or just can't get hold of one because um, you can keep your pan warm don't forget turn the gas off if you're going to wrap it in a towel because you don't want any fires uh, now we're at temperature 33 degrees and we're going to add our milk with a stirring motion all of the time and an up and down stirring motion as well which mixes it thoroughly and it's the thorough mixing that's going to make sure that we get an even third um, as we go along. Now once we've got our mixtures in the lid will go on and the whole thing for me will be transferred to the thermal cooker. Um, but not necessarily, you might have a warm room, you might have a warm cupboard. You can put it almost anywhere and in the next video you will see how we actually test for a curd by breaking the cheese um, with a knife. You can use your finger as long as it's clean and it works pretty well. You can see the whey coming out straight off and on goes the second lid. So if you have an inquisitive cat it can't get anywhere near your milky cheese. The Halloumi course part two. Now it's time to check for curds. It's been in there for over an hour. We didn't get many good curds when I checked after 45 minutes. And there are curds there. You can see where the um, whey has come out. But it's not particularly uh, strong curds. So I know straight away, and there could be lots of reasons for this. It could be the milk. It could be the temperatures. It could be the rennet. I rather think it's probably the rennet. But um, it could well be my own fault as well. But you have to put up with these things when you're cheese making. Sometimes um, it happens that it doesn't work out as quickly as you can or as well as you can. So chop your curd mass into squares, uh, squares ish shapes, which are around about a centimeter, centimeter and a half in size. And then we're going to increase the temperature to around about 40 degrees Celsius and then leave it for half an hour during which time the curds should shrink a little and while we're getting ready for that while we're waiting for that we're getting ready to actually do the job of separating the whey we're going to keep the whey we need it so on goes the cheesecloth onto a colander over another pan and that is important we need this whey because we're going to cook these curds in the whey so using a slotted spoon, we're actually going to pour out as much of the whey as possible and collect the curds into the cheesecloth. 
This is an important part. We need to get rid of whey. Whey is bad for cheese. It goes off. It's full of sugar. And the milk will, um, the, the cheese made from the milk will actually start to smell rancid. Just in the way that butter does. Just in the way that milk does if you leave it alone. The salt will help, of course. So we keep up with this um, draining of our curds. And when we've got as much of the curds out as we think we possibly can, um, we're then going to filter the rest of this whey um, into the second pan, into our new pan, so that we've got a good amount of whey available for cooking the curds. So I'm going to use my um, large strainer and in goes the whey and bits of cheese mixed, mixed up and that's going to be our cooking medium for the rest of the cheese making process. It's really quite important that you, during the course of this, treat your curds gently. The more you mess them about, the more trouble you will have with them. Now if we've got to press this cheese and we not you don't need a cheese press. Watch this, this is a great trick. Um, a chopping board, on goes the cheesecloth with the curds in it, press it down a little bit. Now we're going to unwrap it a touch and you'll see already, even after just five minutes, we're beginning to get a cheesy sort of a shape there. And we're going to pack this cheese tightly in our cheesecloth so that when we press it it's not going to wobble about and fall away we're going to have some really quite together cheese here but it will be pressed so that's the first part of it on the first chopping board we need another chopping board to go on the top making at least from poundland so rather than spending 70 quid <laughs> on a uh, cheese press all that you need is a huge pan of water now this has probably got about um, seven liters in it and therefore it's probably weighs about nine kilos altogether and you need to balance it this is the scary bit but it works once the cheese has settled a little bit it doesn't go anywhere and you can uh, just leave it to be able to do its job This is the Halloumi course part three, and this is where we really get to grips with making our cheese. The whey has been put on to boil, and you have to be careful when you're boiling whey. It can bubble rather fiercely at times. That's because of the protein that's in it. And then over by the sink on the draining board, the cheese should be pressed. It's been doing this now for two hours. Oops, a daisy, the thing was a bit sticky there. And having done uh, your pressing, we can then unfold it gently, now be really gentle with it, even though it's quite tough, the cheese at the moment, it won't always be tough, it's particularly during the cooking process, so be gentle with it, don't rip the cheesecloth off, and we're going to cut it into pieces that are about an inch by two to three inches, maybe 30 millimetres by about um, 50 millimetres, something like that, 65 millimetres. And having done so, we'll be able to have a look at the cheese as it has formed and as it has been pressed. Now, as we said in the earlier part, we know already that the yield for this cheese isn't as high as it was because we had soft curds. So that usually is probably another third of this amount from the amount of milk that we made, that we used. But then all of this halloumi for the price we paid is very, very cheap indeed. Now let's have a look at this uh, cheese. You'll be able to see how smooth and how quite firm it is. And having cut it into our little blocks, by the time we've done all of this, the whey should be actually at boiling point. So we need to give that some attention. There it is. And we'll turn the gas right down now. And the bubbles are disappearing. And it's time to put the uh, pieces of cheese 
into the hot whey. And the reason for this is it's going to cook and the cheeses sink to the bottom straight away. And when they're ready, they'll rise to the surface. Now while they're cooking, it takes about 20 minutes, we're going to prepare um, our salt. And this is a couple of sprigs, uh, large sprigs of mint from the garden, which we chop. I'm not that quick really. And then we're going to add about four dessert spoons of uh, non-iodized or sometimes kosher, sometimes known as cheese salt. And this is the fine stuff. It's not the, um, the, the, the really rough stuff because I want it to be fine. I don't want big lumps of salt on my cheese. Out it comes. You see it wobble there. Um, it's quite delicate because it's hot. It looks a bit like tofu and you think probably I've done this wrong. This isn't going to work because, well, it's it's not firm like cheese. It's gelatinous and wobbly. But pump it onto some tissue and then give that a good uh, damping off, uh, drying off, sorry, with some more tissue. And then onto the salt mixture um, it goes. Just be gentle with it. Don't force it. Don't rush it around. And on the salt, now the salt's going to draw more water out, but also the salt is going to uh, make it a little bit firmer and it's going to preserve it too. So try to cover all the edges with salt and then leave it to one side. I'm sorry that the camera work isn't the best there. There you go. And the mint is going to dry on top. Now there's several ways of doing the mint. It's like this where you've got bits of mint on the outside. Another way is to simply salt the outside of the cheese plain and then put mint leaves on it. And the other way is to fold the piece of cheese in half, putting a layer of mint between the two folds. Either way, when the cheese cools down, it's firm and tasty and gorgeous.